7 of the Lonely Knitter podcast. My name is Laura, today is Sunday the 11th of August and welcome to my knit night. <laughs> Uh, if you're a returning viewer, thank you so so much for coming back, you know the normal shenanigans that will commence. <laughs> if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for checking me out, I hope you enjoy what you see. Uh, if not, there's lots of other knitting podcasts on the internet, I'm sure you'll find one you love. <laughs> um, so, this week, lots has been going on, so I'm going to get through my little admin bits first. Uh, so first of all, I have you can find me oh, my brain's gone you can find me on instagram as the lonely knitter on ravelry as the lonely knitter 2 and here on youtube and i'm assuming you don't need help finding me because you're already here <laughs> um i have a facebook group that is co-hosted with my lovely friend katie of the geordie knits podcast uh, it is knit along with geordie knits and the lonely knitter so come and find us over there. We have a shawl along currently running. Any shawl, come and join us. Uh, it, it was running from the 1st of June. It is a three month knit along and we will be pulling prizes. Um, I need to go and set up my Ravelry group, um, my Ravelry thread in the group. Uh, so the group on Ravelry is the Lonely Knitter podcast group. Uh, I will be going over there and I will be setting up that shawl along um, thread for finished objects because we have another um, thread that needs to be opened. I have just hit 500 subscribers here on YouTube, which is a huge, massive, big deal for me. Um, thank you so much for my lovely podcasty friends who have been sharing on Instagram that I was very close to hitting 500. Um, I will be giving away this skein of hand-dyed yarn. This is by King Becky. It is a it's the colourway Belle, it's 100% merino, super wash wool, and it is in a sock weight, and there is 100 grams. I'll be putting in a few light bulb stitch markers with this, and, <coughs> excuse me, if anybody wants um, one, <laughs> I always put the Lonely Knitter little pin badges in with my prizes. I try to remember to, they should be in there. I want them all out of my house, so that's fine. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm incredibly grateful that 500 people have been so lovely as to hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. So I'll just tell you a quick little bit about myself. Um, my name is Laura, as I'm sure I said. I am a wife, a mum, a pharmacy dispenser in real life. <laughs> and um, I, have, yeah, I have a two and a half year old daughter and I live in Lowestoft in Suffolk in the UK with um, her and my husband and I am currently just over 20 weeks pregnant just over halfway so hopefully all being well I will have a new tiny person joining me in December um, I don't tend to really show um, Ellie my daughter on social media and I am sure it will be the same when it comes to the new baby so don't get your hopes up um, but I do talk about them on my podcast. Uh, I also um, have a few knitting pattern designs and um, they are available to purchase on Ravelry if you are interested. And I currently have some designs in the works that I will also be talking about today. Um, I think that's about everything that I was going to say um, in terms of admin jazz. And... Yeah, I'm sure that's everything. <laughs> uh, I've got a lot to talk about today, so I will try and power through. So first of all, I do have a finished object to share with you this week. I am quite proud of this. <laughs> so I said last week that I would uh, wind up a couple of skeins of the yarn that I showed uh, that I sort of had plans to do something with. And the first thing that I had plans to do something with was a skein of Brambles and Me. That is my lovely friend Mia and she's the dyer behind Brambles and Me. Here is her little logo, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. And this is, it was a skein of her Ridge Base, which is 100% superwash blue-faced Leicester in high twist four ply in the Northern Skies colorway. I really wanted to knit a pair of socks out of this. Obviously it is a no nylon yarn, but 
Uh, Mia is a natural dyer. She dyes with natural dye extracts and she um, uses natural yarns. So there's no nylon in this yarn. Um, and I wanted to see how they would do for socks. So I bought this yarn at the Wool Monty show. Um, it was her first show, so I was very happy to support her there. And I bought this skein of yarn and um, it sat in my stash for a little while. I just I knew I had to do something socks and something sort of special with it, but I didn't know what. So they're on the blockers. They are still in very, very little bit damp, but this week I designed a pair of socks. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> um, my design mojo, if you've been watching for a while, has been a little bit off. I've had a little bit of a mental health, not nice time, um, physical health, not nice time at the start of this pregnancy. I've not been feeling great and um, I have just been struggling a little bit and it has meant that my anxiety has been at an all time high and I haven't been getting half the things done that I would normally be getting done. And one of the things that actually at one point I was barely doing was knitting, which drove me insane. I didn't know what to do with myself. But um, as part of that, my design ha work had also dropped off quite a bit. Well, this was the pattern to pull me back in. <laughs> so I took this skein of Rambles and Me and started, I, I wound it up along with another skein of yarn on Sunday night last week before I went to bed and then I worked Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday I cast on the cuff for the first of these socks and Sunday morning, this morning, I cast them off. I um, kitchen and stitched and wove in the ends and blocked and I love them. <laughs> these are the Nest Point socks so I'll just show you on the blockers but you really can't get a good view of what's going on when you look at them face on you will see what I mean. So this is the pattern that just runs down the leg and then down the front of the socks. I don't know if you can see that in the light, it is poor light. There we go. So it is a relatively simple pattern. It is a four round repeat and um, my lovely friend Sharon, I've sent it out to testers, it is in testing right now. My lovely friend Sharon of the SR SCR1TNO podcast go and watch it if you haven't because it is fabulous and she's vlogging August right now and it's amazing she's been vlogging while she's been on holiday um <clears throat> well not really on holiday more like a working trip <laughs> <coughs> where she's been ballooning in France and it is amazing um but Sharon I sent her this pattern incredibly late on Friday night so it's Sunday it's Sunday night now I sent her it incredibly late on Friday night she started working on one of these as a test on Saturday morning, Sunday afternoon, she cast off the first sock and she had no problems. So that's gone a long way to resolving some anxiety issues that I was having about sending a pattern out again after quite a long time. So these socks are finished. They, once they are, com in fact, no, they are completely dry. They are completely dry. They can come off the blockers and they can go in my box of socks, which is actually right there. So I might just quickly grab it so I can show you what that's looking like right now. And then I cast these off this morning. Obviously they were a little, it took me a little bit longer than a pair of vanilla socks would because they, uh, because I was working out the pattern. I actually wouldn't say that they really took me that much longer than a pair of vanilla socks to knit. The legs are quite a bit longer. Yeah, they are quite a bit longer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I've done 13 repeats of the four stitch, four round pattern. So watch my brain try and do maths. What's that, 52 rounds? I normally only do 40 rounds on a leg. So there's like 12 extra rounds on the leg, which is a substantial amount considering I normally like quite short legs. So these are all finished. Um, but also obviously I was working out the pattern and writing it down and then I took some time to write it up and as I said I worked Monday and Tuesday and then I've had a poorly toddler, I'll tell you about that at the end, which has meant not as much knitting at all times as I would have liked. So these are rolled up, I am going to pop them in my box of socks right now, which means I'll also be able to show you, oh, excuse me, What's in here? So this is my box of socks. It's not actually that big a box. I obviously did not have 
uh, massively high expectations of myself at the beginning of the year. Probably a good idea because I then didn't knit socks for like three months. <laughs> but now we are getting, I am trying to catch up. I would like 12 pairs in here by the end of the year. I'd love to have more than 12 pairs. I unfortunately don't think more than 12 pairs will really fit. So, what is going on? I've forgotten how to roll a pair of socks. They're now in there. So I am at seven pairs. We are in August. So we're in the eighth, eighth month. So I can't see why I can't catch up. One more pair this month. It's only the 11th. I've got ages left. Quick little rundown. This is Stranded Dye Works in the uh, glass slipper colorway. Uh, those are the Blake Law socks from my friend Georgie Knits. This is a set of minis from Lay Family Yarn. These are my Show Show Scraps socks pattern. This is the Champion socks pattern, which is in a set of minis from my lovely friend Jane of Family Tree Yarns. This was gifted to me, this gorgeous stripy Dragon Hill Studios yarn. Um, the main colour was gifted for me, to me from my friend Sharon, and then the Hills, Clothes and Tufts are in coordinating minis, all from Dragon Hill Studios that I bought at Unravel. And then, and this, this stranded I bought at Unravel as well. These are Zucky Darling's um, plain vanilla socks that I bought the yarn for at the Walmonty. And again, Stranded Dye Works in the Flamingo Legs colourway that I bought at Unravel. And then here we go, a little bit of Brambles and Me in the Ness Point sock design, which will be released by myself relatively shortly. <laughs> um, yeah, seven pairs. I'm pretty happy. Oh, so, those lived in this little bag, which is also from my friend Mia of Brambles and Me. Um, she had dyed a few of these up herself, gorgeous, gorgeous, all speckly, and then decided they weren't as perfect as she would like them to be. Um, but I went on and on about how much I loved them. <laughs> so she was an absolute gem. And she sent me one when she sent me uh, a, a yarn order that I bought from her last year. Not last year, earlier in the year. And um, in here, I'm also keeping a lavender sachet because, oh my gosh, lavender at the moment I don't know if it is just being pregnant because I have always loved the smell of lavender but it is like a drug to me at the moment I'm just like every now and then I lean down and sniff inside my project bag because it's amazing I only have two lavender sachets in my life one is living in the project bag that I'm using right this minute which my grandma bought me back from Croatia which is amazing so between these two I'm like guarding my lavender with my life <laughs> Um, yeah, so those are all finished. On to whips, because I didn't finish anything else this week. And my only work in progress is a sock, which I cast on earlier for today. Um, I have decided that I love 2.25 millimeter, 80 centimeter circular chow goose, chow goose, as my favorite needle. I have now chosen this as my favorite needle. I have some higher, higher sharps that I will never use again, because they nearly put a hole in my finger. I have, um, I have, uh, Knit Pro, Knit Pro, Zings, that, because I have been ruined by Chowgu, like, I have so many pairs of Zings, so many pairs of Zings, and now I have been ruined by Chowgu and don't want to knit with anything else, so I only have one set of these. It needs to be rectified, man, <laughs> like, Soon. when payday rolls around I will be buying some more um, because I can only knit one pair of socks at a time I like to have vanilla socks on the go um, for when I want something brainless but then I also have some sock designs in my head where I can't do both at the same time and be able to just pull out my vanilla socks whenever I want to because my child either taken up on a pattern sock or on a vanilla sock like I need more <laughs> um so really it's probably helping my whip count right now that I'm not being able to cast on all the socks all the time but at least one more set I really need them <laughs> um but this is a vanilla sock in this amazing fruitful fusion yarn I showed this last week in stash enhancement and I said how much I absolutely loved it and that I would have to cake it up and get started on it really soon so here we go. Here's the ball band, just so you can see. This is Fruitful Fusion dies. This is my Fruitful Fusion dies is 
my lovely friend Ishrat. I get to call her a friend because I have met her in person and she is lovely. <laughs> and this is the Colourway Harvest, which is 75% Superwash BFL and 25% Nylon in a fingering weight, 100 grams of fingering weight yarn. And the colours are amazing in the ball. They're really autumnal but bright autumnal and um yeah you just can see they're gorgeous makes me think pumpkins though it isn't that full-on orange um but it is but it isn't do you know what i mean you, you get what i mean right um so here we go and this is all i have knit so far so i will put a progress keeper in so that you can see how far i get in the next week this is a little different from my normal vanilla sock. So rather than just um, a two by two rib and then, so I normally do about 20 rows of a two by two rib and then about 40 ra uh, rounds, not rows, rounds of a leg and then heel flap and gusset is my current favorite. And then 50 rounds on the foot before the toe. Well, this time, I don't know if you can see this, but my rib looks a little different. This is not a two by two rib. This is almost a, oh, well, I'm calling it a fake cable, a bit of a faux cable looking rib. I wanted to practice this because I have another design in my head and I have received some amazing yarn this week and I want it to be featured in that yarn um, for this design. So that's the cuff that is going to be on the design and just wanted to test it out and see how it went. And I thought, I need a vanilla sock, I want a vanilla sock, I am ready for a vanilla sock after this design, but I just want to see how this little idea with this um, cuff would look in my head. So now on yarn, I can see, and I love it, so I am going to knit these vanilla, and then I will start my design um, pretty soon. I have lots planned, I will tell you all about it. Uh, so that is all my whips. I have been very monogamous this week, as I have the last few weeks. It's all socks all the time. This is, you know, could be the crazy sock lady because it's all I'm in. <laughs> um, so now I'm going into stash enhancement. <sighs> this is a bit epic. I did buy most of this. Um, the bits I didn't buy, I will tell you. Um, and um, yeah. This is more than I would normally ever, ever, ever have in one podcast episode. I actually bought it all on payday, like a week and a half ago, and I didn't have all of it. It hadn't been delivered yet for me to show you um, last week. Now I am poor. So last week, I think I said I've spent all of my yarn budget and a bit more for this month. I cannot buy any more yarn. There will be no more yarn. Well, you will now see... <laughs> the things that have all turned up because I have spent all of my yarn budget. All of it. <laughs> so the first thing that I have to show you is the project bag that my current Fruitful Fusion socks are living in. This is a Tatty Designs project bag and Tatty Designs was having an Instagram sale of the bits and bobs that they had left um, in their shop to make way for new um, things. And this sock size project bag in this Neverland, it's Neverland um, like cartoon fabric and it has gorgeous mermaids on it, which actually reminded me of this conversation that Katie and I were having a few weeks ago about the little mermaid not being a white redhead in the remake, the Disney remake. Because we had this conversation because I am a Disney nerd and even though I am a grown woman I do care about these things <laughs> and she wanted to see my point of view on it and on one half I was like mm, like I grew up seeing the little mermaid Ariel as a red-headed white mermaid woman thing half fish lady and um yeah that's if you said Ariel to me that is the image that pops into my head um, and I had a red-headed friend as a child, a very red-headed friend who was mercilessly teased and um, not, uh, didn't love it, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And um, Ariel was her princess. So uh, being Ginger, she used to say Ginger, uh, she always used to say, 
that's the one ginger one. I've got one. You know, when if we would talk about them, that would be Hair Princess. So, Ariel's been doing it for quite a few years for the ginger girls. But, after having a chat with Katie where we discussed this, so the new Ariel is not white. I don't actually know what ethnicity she is. New Ariel actress. Who is it? I think it's Halle Bailey. Oh, here we go. Oh, she's black. Oh, she's beautiful. So she is black. That's what Google is telling me. Please forgive me if I have, if she is not, if that's not how she identifies and I have gone and said something about her. Um, but Google is telling me that. <laughs> um, how many little black girls look at Disney princesses and only have what, Tiana? Like, let them have another Disney princess that they can really see themselves in. There are plenty of white Disney princesses. Who gives the monkeys? Why are people online going crazy about this? Um, personally, one of my favorite Disney princesses is Tiana, because, I mean, she's technically not a princess until, well, you know what I mean. But it is Tiana, because she is a amazing, independent, I can do anything woman. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I love her and the colour of the princess to me doesn't matter but the reason that it doesn't matter to me is because I have a massive amount of white privilege and have gone through life being able to access and have everything and you know within reason <laughs> but I have nothing denied to me because of my colour but um, the skin colour of other little girls <laughs> I want them to have more accessibility. I don't want there to be a barrier. I want, you know, girls of all, and boys, obviously, children of all um, skin colours to be able to relate to and love everything and everyone about all of the things. But at the end of the day, that isn't the world we live in. And we do live in a racist society. And we do live in a society where people of colour are treated differently. Um, the only way we're ever going to break that down is if everyone keeps being inclusive. And if everyone keeps saying, like, let's fix this. So, I, if my daughter was not white, I would, you know, like, I'd still want her to be able to have things that she could relate to. As it is, she has been born white and she has been born with a huge amount of privilege. And she can pretty much look at any situation in the world and think, I can do that, I can be that. Every little child has that same right. And right now, our uh, society is failing them a little bit. Anyway, I have got onto a rant. I realise I have got onto a rant about Disney princesses. But no, I can't think of anything better than having a few Disney princesses, well, all the Disney princesses of the future, show a broad spectrum of our entire global community. And anyone who's turning around and saying that it, prince, um, mermaids can't be anything but white because they come from a certain area of the world. It's a mermaid. You know that's not real, right? Like, that's not a thing. <laughs> and anyone who says diddly squat to me about mermaids and whether or not they should be white or physically can be white because history would not make them any further colour. Bullshit. Um, this mermaid is black. I am very happy to have her adorning my bag. Anyone who would like to see me at a show or out in public and tell me otherwise, I am just gonna do this. That ah, jog on mate. Not interested. <laughs> Can you tell I feel quite strongly about Disney princesses? <laughs> No, I don't feel that strongly about Disney princesses, I'm not going to lie, but I do feel that strongly about children um, being able to feel the magic of Disney because I love the epic magic of Disney. I realise there's lots of things that Disney do that are a bit shit, as most big companies do, but uh, everyone deserves a little bit of that magic, especially if you are a child.
Anyway, sorry. Massive rant. <laughs> I have a little tatty designs card. My bag came beautifully packaged and with a ribbon. And so here we go, tatty designs. She's on Etsy. Oh, and on Instagram, which is where I found out, I had to just block a piece out because there was a code on the back of this card. So I'll just cover this up. That is her Etsy shop. And follow her Instagram, she is tatty underscore designs. And yes, £10 for this bag, it's on sale and I was very chuffed with it. So that's the first thing. Next thing. This came, and this came with ridiculously speedy delivery, especially considering that the dyers um, behind this company have been at a show at the weekend. I think this still turned up on the Monday. It might have been the Tuesday. It was very fast. This is my first ever Giddy Aunt Yarns. I've been following them on Instagram for a while. I think most of the stuff they have is gorgeous and I'm going to be meeting them at Perth Festival of Yarn. But I really, really wanted to buy some. Now, <laughs> I want to, I love to show support for the um, yarn dyers that are part of this community that I really have got to know who I, you know, online, maybe just, not in person, but the ones that I chat to, the ones that I think are fabulous, um, I think you're all fabulous, but I haven't got unlimited amount of money, and if I did, you'd be getting it all, all of you liars. <laughs> but um, this time, I'm trying to move my money around a little and spend with the people that I may not have spent with before, but that I still have those relationships with. So I'm trying to go around everyone and make sure that I get a little bit of everybody I love in my stash. So Giddy Aunt Yarns, I bought these two. They are both a fingering weight yarn. This is the first one that I bought, which I have been looking at for quite a long time. I think I started com commenting on it when it first popped up on their Instagram, and I love red. I love red. I love all colours of the rainbow, but I just love this red. It is ruby slippers, and it is in their Merino Smooth Sock, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 425 metres to 100 grams. So this is Giddy Aunt Yarns, and this red is so rich. I can't even begin to tell you that is where the light is hitting it is a more a very true to colour. And oh my gosh, ruby slippers. I love you. I want a lipstick in this colour. You may notice I am wearing lipstick. What? If you're a returning viewer, you'll be like, what is that on your face? Don't often wear makeup. If I do, it is a big occasion. I have been to a charity event this afternoon and it is on there because of that. <laughs> but at this charity event they were talking about lipstick and they're like, you can always wear lipstick even if you don't wear any other yarn, uh, yarn, yarn on the brain, even if you don't wear any other makeup. And I was like, I never wear eye makeup and I feel a little bit like I have little piggy eyes without eye makeup. And she was like, no, no, even if you don't wear eye makeup, wear the lipstick, it will make everything look better. Does it make everything look better? <laughs> um, so the second skein of yarn that I got from Giddy Aunt Yarns was this. Oh, I love this so much. It's the colourway Goth Bow. Goth Bow. Oh. Um, and it is in bronze sparkle sock. So there was options on the website where you could drop down and choose if you wanted it not in sparkle, in sparkle, and then what type of sparkle? <laughs> so the type of sparkle that I picked this week, can you tell I'm a bit hyper? I'm a little bit hyper. Just a little bit. I'll crash soon and be so knackered, you wouldn't believe. The reason I'm a little bit hyper, you'd think I'd be really disappointed with this, but it's because, or like depressed about this, but it's because I have really, really bad acid reflux and, and um, heartburn. Which actually just means that I'm very awake for this time of night because I can't get tired because I'm constantly like, all the time. <laughs> so usually you would be getting knackered end of the night, Laura. Instead, tonight you're getting, I, uh, I can't sleep, Laura. <laughs> in a funny mood <laughs> so this is goth bow and oh can you see can you see the colors because the lighting in my room is rubbish i do not have studio lights and i don't know if you can see the bronze sparkle on here i think it might just look like ordinary sparkle come on sparkle for me i don't know I, in real life there is gorgeous gorgeous bronze sparkle running through this and i love it so much so these two yarns i bought from giddy aunt yarns the shipping was epically quick and um 
they are fabulous and I can't wait to knit with them. The second thing that came this week was my first online purchase from my friend Gemma of the project bag. So I first met Gemma in the flesh at the Warm Monty show and she was lovely and I bought a gorgeous skein of her DK fairies in the back row. I'm sure that's what it was called. It was the most beautiful, purpley, pinky, pastely, gorgeous yarn. And I made a couple of um, Beloved bonnets by Tinker Knits. But I've never bought anything from her online. And I think it was the week before last, she launched her online shop. Not her Etsy shop, so it, uh, not her Etsy shop. So she's moving out of that and she's going into an online shop, her own website and selling on there. And so she launched it and I was at work on her launch day. And so after I had finished, I went on there and grabbed myself this skein. So this is the first skein of fingering weight yarn of hers that I have ever had. And it is in the colorway Tiger Lily. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 425 meters to 100 grams of four ply. There is her lovely logo and here here it is all the speckles so it came with a tea I'm sure this tea came with it. I've got loads of gubbins here and I'm sure this tea came with it um here is her card and here is a gorgeous stitch marker that she sent to and the reason I am really 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 in love with this stitch marker is because I have only I've only ever had one I've only got one stitch marker uh, well progress keeper but it also could be used like a stitch marker with one of these the I think they're supposed to be like an earring back um closure so you can use it as a normal stitch marker on the needle or you can use it as a progress keeper I only have one and it is my unicorn beaded one from the Warm Monty from Hannah of the Corner of Craft and that one is incredibly precious to me and now I have another one with the same sort of um, clasp and it is a heart a lovely lovely oh no I'm not showing it very well heart okay that's that so the next thing I'm going to show you is not yarn next thing I have to show you is not yarn, it's bags, because who can live without bags? I've got another tea. Funnily enough, I don't drink tea. Um, I am trying to get into it. I have been trying to get into it for years and years, but every time one of these gorgeous, gorgeous people puts me in a tea, I love it. I love the little sachets. I have a little box full of them in one of my kitchen cupboards, and I am trying to try them, especially the flavoured ones. This one's a radiant blend of organic nettle, fennel, and peppermint. I actually don't mind peppermint tea. So that might be a one that I can try. Um, but they all go into this little box, and then the ones that I feel like maybe I definitely wouldn't like, or like the breakfast teas, like maybe this one, um, I send them out with giveaways <laughs> and little packages that I send to my friends. <laughs> so if you ever get a tea from me that isn't like a peppermint, because I do often send out peppermint, um, it probably it's probably one someone has gifted to me don't please don't think I'm cheap <laughs> um anyway so my next order was from Jibby Roo Sews I have had Jibby Roo Sews bags before they are fabulous and ridiculously reasonably priced um I don't set their price points they sell a lot on Etsy they have like they have a lot of bags on Etsy Go and check them out. Um, I am not saying that I wouldn't pay more for a project bag because I definitely have done in the past. But when you only have a few quid left in your account, which I did at this point, I uh, choose to spend it with them. <laughs> so I bought two bags. This one, which I'm going to use as a notions pouch. It is a sheepy, knitting sheepy bag. How cute is that? So a little, I'm going to use it as a large notions pouch. And they come with these gorgeous... Um, progress keepers that are um, tassels on their zips and this one has like a red it's like a pinky red but it is more of a red it's not coming out right there the lining and then the other one I bought myself was this 
clipboard bag. I think this would be absolutely fine for socks or any other smaller project. And it's clipboards. Ta-da! And has a lovely little tassel. There we go. So I bought myself these two bags and they were so, so generous. Previously, they had offered to give me a bag for a giveaway. And um, I took them up on that offer this time and said I would absolutely love one if they would like to send me one. So they have sent me this bag. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow, yellow rainbow bag. I love yellow rainbow bag with, I love this, I love this, pink with white spots on the inside. How gorgeous is that? There's their tag love their tag on the inside and oh how happy is that lining so this is going to go in my giveaway pile I have um, got to get prizes together for the shawl along and I have I'd like to just bring you guys more prizes when I can more um, giveaways when I can when I hit milestones so I think of my next milestone will be 750 subscribers because I feel like a thousand is a long way off I feel like it might take a very long time to get there but if I can get to 750 subscribers at some point I will do another giveaway I will be opening tonight the Ravelry thread for this one for the 500 sub giveaway so they sent me that and they also sent me this absolutely gorgeous progress keeper with a little money bag on which I thought was um quite apt because um after the last there's two, one more skein that I have bought out of the rest of the things I have to show you and after that I had no money left so I still have my money bag stitch marker um, but it's a progress keeper with a big loop on it as well so I can use it as a stitch marker and a progress keeper so that was from Jibby Russo's and they are fabulous so the next thing that came through my door was actually from my lovely friend and I did not spend any money with her this time these are from Brambles and Me my lovely friend Mia so, my lovely friend Mia, I have designed a shawl, it's called the Road to Perth shawl, but I designed it before my sickness at the beginning of this pregnancy, and before I went into a bit of a mental health state, and before I stopped feeling like I could socialise. Um, I put it to one side and it is now giving me major anxiety because I've written the pattern out. It is ready for testing, but I am so, so struggling with the anxiety <laughs> that I haven't been able to ask people to test it. I need to do that within the next couple of days. Um, it's really stressing me out. Uh, but I thought that one thing that might help me calm down about it might be to test it myself. So I told Mia that I was planning to test it myself and um, she would like, because she is still an amazing friend even though I am, you know, struggling with um, being able to cope with it, or I have been anyway, um, she is still going to have my shawl as a kit at the Perth yarn festival this year which I am going to I am one of the featured designers for their Perth pattern along and I am going as a podcaster she has um she offered she said you know if you want to knit it again um and want to knit it as my yarn support one you know as my one I'll send you yarn support and then you can send me that you know what I mean not yarn support what am I about um I'm knitting the sample that's what it was sample for her and I said I would love to knit the sample for you and have that be me testing it again. And I'm sure that me testing it myself will help me to get rid of a lot of that anxiety. So this takes two skeins of fingering weight yarn. Um, and she sent me along these two skeins to knit her sample for her booth out of. So here we go. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. And she has the most amazing skein winder, a uh, ball winder. Look at how perfect these cakes are. Obviously, they've been in my house, so they're a little bit less perfect now. But they're so perfect. My very cheap wool winder does not make cakes this perfect. My very cheap wool winder makes cakes like this. <laughs> um, her very cheap, her very expensive wool winder 
makes beautiful cake. <laughs> um, so these colours, this is actually the same one I used this one, the Cherished Moments colourway in my version, which I don't actually know where I've put right now, I need to find it because this house has been incredibly clean and tidy this week and that means that everything's been tidied away to everywhere. And then this one is the Muddy Boots colourway. These are both her Rockfall base, which is 85% Superwash Blue Faced, Blue Faced Lester, 15% Donegal Nep, and it is a four ply to um, 100 grams to 400 meters yarn. So it's gorgeous. And um, I'm going to be casting that on this week. Because she is my friend and she trusts me, and also she has my address so she can help me down. <laughs> um, so she said she sent me my payment for knitting her sample straight away. So in so I'm knitting her two skeins of yarn for her sample. So she is paying me with two skeins of yarn for myself. So she's very generously, um, even though it's my pattern, that I am going to, you know, have publicised and in kits and everything with her stall and it's knit in her yarn. She's still sending me the yarn to um you know as a as a payment for knitting up her sample so I'm very grateful and I chose two skeins of the ridge base which is the same base that I have knit my Ness Point socks in so this is the 100% superwash blue faced Leicester high twist and I chose the hot toddy which is her signature colour and it is so beautiful you can see all of the tones in there it's not a solid that is definitely a semi-solid variegated yarn. And then this one, which is Campfire, so I picked this one as well. I think they look gorgeous together, though I'm not sure they will go together. I think they might be two individual pairs of socks. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. Um, I unwrapped them with Ellie. Ellie snatched this one out of my hands and she went, this mine, this mine, you have that one, mama, this mine. I was like, okay. <laughs> It took me quite a long time in the end she fell asleep holding it and I just opened her fingers and hid it because I was like it's mine I tell you that for nothing kiddo it's mine <laughs> so these two are real stash enhancement for me whereas the other two will be knit up and given back to Mia as a show sample and then and then blah, 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 can't speak today there are two skeins left I bought one of these I saw this colorway on my friend Jane Etsy Jane's Etsy shop Etsy shop, jeez. Um, Jane is the dyer behind Family Tree Yarns. I love Jane's yarn. I love it. I love it, Jane. I love it. <laughs> um, go over to her Etsy, her Etsy shop and check it out because she is epic. But when I saw the name of this yarn, I had to buy it. I love Stranger Things. I love anything geeky, anything um, like, I'll watch anything pretty much anyway but I love Stranger Things I love it so much and this yarn is called the upside down and if you've watched Stranger Things like aha uh -huh, the upside down I love it so much <laughs> so she sent me this one which I bought from her shop so the Upside Down, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and it is 100 grams to 425 meters. It's gorgeous, family tree yarns. And then she gifted me this skein. It's a skein of vinyl. So it is this gorgeous, gorgeous black. If you can see the tones in this black. And she said she thought they looked good together. She'd be right. <laughs> um, here we go. So these are going to be my next design project. Once I have finished these socks, the cuff that I've put on these vanilla socks is the one that I'm planning to go with this. So I'm going to do probably heels, toes and cuffs from this vinyl and then the body of the sock and the main patterning of the sock in the upside down. And I have a Stranger Things name in mind for my pattern and I'm going full on dork here because it's so cool, so cool. <laughs> so I love this yarn so much. You know when you just, you get something that comes into your house and you're like, I love it. I wanna walk around with it like a pet on my shoulder, like a parrot. I could just walk around and like look at it. It's like my lavender sachet. Basically, I'm gonna end up a very odd old woman whose husband and children want nothing to do with her 
because she walks around with a skein of yarn and a lavender sachet. <laughs> so that is all of the sash enhancement. That was mega, 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 mega. Let me look at my show notes. Ooh. Dun, 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 dun. Um, put that over there. So news this week, I have two big bits of news, yarny related that I just have to share with you right now. The first one being, I'm going to the Southern Wool Show. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be going um, because I am broke. <laughs> I'm not broke, I'm just a little tight for cash because I spent all of my monthly money because I didn't think I was going anywhere on all of this gubbins, which I do not regret, not one little bit, but now I'm going to have absolutely zilch to spend at the Southern Wall Show. I am scrubbing money together. Like, seriously, like any... I found a pound coin in the bottom of my bag. I was like, Southern Wall Show money. Put that over here. <laughs> I'll be taking a packed lunch. I <laughs> will be like, what can I do for free? <laughs> you know? What can I do this month for free so they can put other money aside to spend at the Southern Wall Show? That is what I will be doing. Um, so I'm going on the Sunday and the reason I'm going, because otherwise it would be quite a long um, journey from mine to the show um, in the car. So we are talking like three hours, I think, maybe four, can't remember, it might be four, in the car both ways. Um, anything that's like six to eight hours of driving in the car I'm fine on a bus I've always been fine on a bus but I get car sick and especially since I've been pregnant I get really car sick um, it's hideous it's absolutely hideous and um, plus I need to pee more than usual well I got a message from the Lost Sheep wool shop and that is um, a lovely wool shop I got a message from Claire and she said, it's just down the road from me. Well, I say it's about half an hour drive from me actually, but that's just down the road around here. And she said, we've got some tickets left. We know some spaces available on our coach. We're taking a coach, picks up from 6.30 a.m. from the shop and um, goes to the Southern Wall Show on the Sunday. It's 29 pounds 50 and that includes your show ticket. So I may have borrowed money from my Christmas present budget. I'll put it back next month. I keep putting money aside for Christmas presents because I'm trying to be organised. Um, and I paid for my ticket. I was like, yes please, yes please. <laughs> um, so I paid for my ticket and then instantly messaged my friend Sharon of the SCR1 TNO podcast. I was like, Sharon, I'm coming to the Summer World Show because I knew she was going. Well, she was going on Saturday, she'd already booked a class. There was me devastated for about 20 seconds when she turned around and said that her lovely husband is going to drive her up so she can go two days in a row. I'm going to spend all of my day with my adopted yarn mum, just so as you know. If you're looking for me at the Southern Wall Show, just look for Sharon because I will be glued to that lovely woman. <laughs> um, just that so you want Sharon. Glued. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to the Southern Wall Show. I am incredibly excited and I am trying to put by every penny that I can gubbins together for the gubbins together. Where did that come from? I have no idea what that even means. I'm broken. It's too late. It's all gone wrong. <laughs> okay, so yes, I'm scraping the cash together because I want to spend things at Southern Wall Show. It'll be just before payday. And then just after payday, I have birth. So um, I'll be spending all my money next month at birth. <laughs> Basically, I spend all my money on yarn and have no money for anything else. There we go. And second big bit of yarny, fibery related news. I have been trying, I've been trying to stay away from all of the spinning. I love hand spun yarn. I love it. I used to have, a, it was a wee peggy it was called. It was a vintage, very vintage um, a spinning wheel. It was a castle wheel. Um, my granddad had to do, like, jerry rig the pedal because um, the wood had broken at one point. He put that back together. It was belonged to my mum's friend's granny and it had just fallen apart throughout the years. I managed to, with bits and bobs, put that spinning wheel back together and use it. I had a drum carder. I was like 
you know, I was getting um, unwashed, unprocessed fleeces. They were black, they weren't white so I couldn't really dye them. I mean, I'm sure you can dye black fleece, fleece if you bleach it. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how it works. But I had um, three giant black dirty pooey fleeces at one point that I was washing bit by bit in my mum's bathtub. This is when I, back when I lived at home. She hated it. They stank. I kept them in the back of my car because unless I was bringing them in to wash them and they were going to then be clean, I was not allowed them in the house. So my, um, I had a 1964 Austin Mini in British racing green. It was gorgeous. Um, but um, it stank. And I mean stank of sheep poo. And none of my friends were getting it for a little while. I didn't manage to process them all, but I did process a few of them. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, um, I have done the spinning thing. When I moved in with Chris, I think it was just after we moved, my spinning wheel broke. So that would have been about eight years ago now. Um, my spinning wheel broke and I didn't know how to fix it anymore. It was too big a break and it was just falling apart. It was very old and I sold it for a minimal amount of money. And I sold my drum carder for a reasonable amount of money to a lady and her son who rebuild and remake old spinning wheels. So um, it went to a good home. But ever since then, all I've had is a drop spindle. And as much as I <laughs> want to spin and I want the yarn, drop spindling is the slowest thing that ever after you've had a wheel. Like you have a wheel and you're like chundering away, like, Ooh, here we go, here we go. Well, not that anyone spins like this, I don't know if I'm trying to ride some sort of horse here, but like I'm spinning away, I'm spinning away. That's my spinners. There you go. My legs are going down here, and cranking out all this yarn. You know, plying all my yarn. I'm, I made a pair of socks almost. They were just short of a toe, um, because I think they're somewhere in the whip, a whip cupboard of doom over there. Um, you know, I just I can't drop spindle, man. It's the slowest thing in the world. It's too slow. I don't like, like I know these are slow hobbies. Um, like the hobbies like, like knitting and that compared to just going out and, or compared to like cranking on a sock machine. Uh, knitting socks is a lot slower. When my hands are knitting, it does not feel that slow. <laughs> when, I, when I'm spindling and I'm there for an hour, I did some this week, it's downstairs, I didn't bring it up. But you're there for an hour spindling away, spinning away, what, I don't know what the word, right word is for that. Um, and then all you have at the end is this little bit on your spindle and you're like, where's my yarn man? I just put an hour in, where is my yarn? I have got a spin wheel coming. <laughs> uh, I cracked, it is Mina, knitting expat, her fault first of all, because seriously man, how much spinning have I been subjected to through her YouTube channel over the last uh, few months? <laughs> um, Fair play to Mina, she definitely does like label her videos like, you know, this is a spinning video, like this is a fibre haul, etc, etc. I still have to watch everything that Mina puts on YouTube because she's really cool. <laughs> so therefore, I'm still subjected to it. <laughs> so that has slowly been wearing me down, wearing me down, wearing me down. And then my friend Katie of the Georgia Knits podcast bought herself a drop spindle. She also, before she, she bought one, but before that turned up, she also was gifted one from our lovely friends over at the Hairy Sheep podcast, Emma and Rosie. And she starts drop spindling and I'm like, oh, I better get my drop spindle out. I'm feeling a bit of this because my friend's doing it and I am nothing if not a sheep. It is my spirit animal. <laughs> um, and it brought back my love of hand spun yarn. I love hand spun yarn, um, but still just so slow. I want an e-spinner. I would chat with my husband, he was like, please do not bring a massive spinning wheel into this house, we are trying to sell this house, it's going to be on the market very, very soon, we already have a lot of gubbins, a lot of that gubbins is craft gubbins, <laughs> that he has absolutely zero interest in, <laughs> so um, the idea for him, when I say spinning wheel, he thinks giant, great big, peddly, you know, wheel. Uh, he didn't know what, know what an e-spinner was, so I started looking up e-spinners. I was hard pressed to find anything for less than 500 quid. 
there's definitely no way that's happening. Well, then I just happened to see someone tag one of their videos with a hashtag. It was no one that I followed, but they tagged one of their videos with a hashtag that I follow. And it was of an electric eel nano e-spinner. And it was the cutest thing I have ever seen in my life. So I googled it. And then I had a little look into it. And then I realised, so it used to be a Kickstarter. And they fulfilled and finished their Kickstarter. And now it's for sale. And it is an e-spinner that fits in the palm of your hand. And it's like plastic, I think. I think the original versions were 3D printed. Um, I'm not sure if, I don't think these ones are. But they might be. But they, it would fit in the palm of my hand. I've got a picture. And they do it in purple and charcoal. Purple, all the way. Um, and it was the most gorgeous little thing. Anyway, so I've watched a million videos. I've read a lot of reviews. I've watched a few um, YouTube reviews. I can't tell you how much I've wanted one of these. How do I turn the brightness down on my iPad? There it is. Here we go. Can you see that? It's in a hand. It's in a hand. And it's purple. So there it was. I was looking at it and I was thinking it's still going to be way out of my price range. Considering my price range is zero and I have nothing. <laughs> uh, not right now anyway. And then when I actually looked it up, the deluxe version with seven bobbins, a USB cable so that I can plug it into a phone charger, oh you know what I mean, like one of those little phone batteries, and a plug socket charger, all and delivery from America, all came to about $130 American. In pounds, that cost on PayPal once it was paid for, because yes, I've ordered one. Um, it was 112 quid. I did not pay for it. I was chatting with my parents and um, saying how much I wanted one and suggested that if they would consider buying that for me as an incredibly early 30th birthday present, I'll be 30 next year, it would be the most epic thing that had ever happened. So there was me on tenter hooks, <clears throat> building up to this conversation with my mum and dad, thinking, come on, come on ask them just ask them but then there's a little bit of me like don't ask them because if I ask them they might say no and then my hopes are dashed ask them because <laughs> then you'll never know <laughs> and I just said it to my dad and just like I really want to buy this that they're the ones that bought me that original wee peggy castle spinning wheel they know my love of fiber and yarny things they know it's not going to go away they know that I was the 16 year old knitting in her GCSE um revision sessions they know that I am full on committed to the fibre life. I think there's a little tiny bit of my husband that kind of hopes that maybe it will all go away and he won't live in a wool house anymore. Um, so my parents are full on on board. I don't live in their home anymore so I don't have a room full of yarn in their house anymore so they don't really care. Um, my dad, I was just chatting with my dad, I was like, I don't know if you would consider this, if this would be something you would be like up for, but I found something that I would really like. It's a spinning wheel and he was like, we used to have a spinning wheel. I was like, yes, Dad, here are the problems with that old spinning wheel. Here's the issues, all completely solved. Here's the fact that there will be no size issues with this tiny, tiny, in the palm of my hand, e-spinner. It's electric as well. And my dad was like, oh, that's cool. And then I was telling him about how the original ones were um, 3D printed. And he was like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, so would you consider buying it for me for a very early 30th birthday present? And he went, yeah, we can do that. And then I just went like this. But <laughs> I don't think I've ever been so excited. Um, and I was stumped for words, which never happens, ever. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I was just like... And then I wanted to tell everyone, and I did tell everyone. That's why we were packing up from my mum's charity event this afternoon. And uh, I did, I told everyone. <laughs> um, and showed everyone the picture. I was very excited. <laughs> um, so... I ordered it tonight, my dad sent me the money into my account, and I've ordered a Electric Eel Nano Who's been up? Cost £112, including delivery, obviously I will probably pay customs, 
customs will be 20% plus um, so that's 20% of the full value including delivery plus an £8 Royal Mail handling fee because they are tight feckers and um, charge you for absolutely everything they can get out of you but there we go um, yeah so I am waiting for that so it's it's on pre-order and it will be sent out from the 14th of September so that's not that long to wait really, not for the price difference of 500 and whatever pound plus 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 for the cheapest um, East Binners that I've seen elsewhere. And okay, it might not be the hardiest thing in the world, man do I look like I am going to give up all the knitting to do all the spinning? There will still be a lot of knitting going on and I am a mother of the toddler, soon to be a mother of, mother of two, dun, dun, dun. and I work and I'm trying to keep this house um, a, a bit tidy <laughs> so it's not going to be like massively massively overused um, but for the right spinning I've got spinning wheel coming and it's electric I'm really excited and I have no one to talk to about this but you guys because even though um, my parents are very happy <laughs> to help me with this my husband was like oh cool <laughs> when I got in because all he cares about the fact that it's not a giant spinning wheel um they don't get it they don't get it i did quickly message a few of my lovely friends on instagram who definitely got it instantly <laughs> um yeah so i'm very very excited for my little purple friend to come and live with me i feel like little purple friend was a bad choice of words my little purple e-spinner <laughs> um that's definitely got to be the title of my little purple friend <laughs> And no one is going to get to an hour and one minute and realise why this podcast is called that. It's really long. Anyway, I have watched podcasts this week. I've watched my amazing friend Katie of the Jordan Knits podcast. I've watched the scr one tno vlogs because they're amazing. I have watched the Hairy Sheep because Emma and Rosie are fabulous. I have been catching up on the Knitting Expat. I love Mina and I am now fully caught up. I have been slowly catching up with the Stranded podcast. I got a few episodes behind and I don't know how because she had a massive gap. I'm not quite caught up but I have watched her giant haul from SSK and her America trip and it was good watching guys, good watching. Um, and I, th oh, I tried the Sherry Iris podcast this week which was lovely, that was recommended to me from my lovely friend Sharon. Oh, and I've got really into The Drunk Knitter. I think I had watched a video by The Drunk Knitter before, but because she doesn't put, like, podcast episode numbers at the beginning of each one, I don't think I realised it was a podcast. I think it, I thought it was, like, a one-off video about something. Uh, now I have realised that is not the case, and I am on it. I am on it. Uh, Safia is um, pregnant, though. I think she is quite a way uh, ahead of me. I'm sure she is, so... That's the heartburn face. Yeah, that's the heartburn face. Um, that's quite fun to have someone else to watch who's pregnant. I'm not wearing my wedding ring this week because my contact dermatitis is back. Um, I actually think it might be because my fingers are getting a bit fat. And I think sometimes if you wash your hands and then your rings are too tight, uh, they trap moisture underneath. And then you get contact dermatitis that way. I don't think it's a white gold allergy because I've been wearing these rings for years. Well, I've been wearing my engagement ring for years. And then my wedding ring just goes on the top. The worst reaction is underneath my engagement ring. I put my wedding ring on the top because it holds my engagement ring on. Because my, my engagement ring was always a bit looser. I know that's not the way around. You're supposed to have it. I don't care. I actually like how it looks more that way. Um, but, yeah, so it's definitely my, enga my engagement ring that's doing the worst job. Um, I have some steroids that I've just been popping on it, just a bit of hydrocortisone cream, but uh, it's not had time to work. So don't worry, no divorce going on over here. Not after last week with the three sweaters that I put in the bin. I did put them in the bin. I did read the comments. I am incredibly grateful to all of the people who tried to make me feel better. Don't worry, I'm not binning him off because of this destruction. Um, he is uh, a very good husband in every other way other than the whole washing of hand knit garments. Um, but, um, yeah. 
uh, a couple of people suggested making bags, making other things. There was definitely no way that I was going to be making anything out of those destroyed sweaters after they were sweaters that I wanted and that I was happy with after a massive amount of work that I put into them. When they were then, like, just looking at them, just seeing them was making me sad. I don't want to have any more involvement with them. They were making me sad. Um, I did, however, have one suggestion about having them for like dog beds for shelters so I did a ring there is a, um, a rescue center it's actually quite a little way from me but I've got a few days off coming up where me and Ellie could drive over there and it's the one that my parents got their most recent dog from and um, I gave them a call and just said do you would you like that and they actually said no they would only like pet beds that have that are specifically made for pet beds um, specifically they would really like ones that are um, covered in something that they can remove and wash that is synthetic fibres that can go on hot washes and um, yeah <laughs> the lady was actually quite rude <laughs> like, we don't want used clothing to use for animal beds and I was like mm, these are hand knit sweaters that um, like it's natural fibres so it won't be anything that is harmful and um, they also have barely been worn before my husband has wrecked them and felted them so they're really snuggly we're not interested, thank you. We only want, and then went onto her list of the things they actually want. Fair enough, fair enough. Threw it in the wheelie bin, sorry. My felted, heart, broken, lovely sweaters went in the wheelie bin. Anyway, I think that's about everything that I was gonna talk about this week. Um, the only other thing that's been going on in this house is that I have been trapped in the house, trapped with a two and a half year old for the last four days. Well, not really, three days, because Saturday I worked, but Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, she came down with hand, foot, and mouth. Ugh. I'm gonna say it again. Ugh. If you've had a child with hand, foot, and mouth, or you've had hand, foot, and mouth yourself, you'll understand what I'm going on about. Uh, she got it incredibly mildly, incredibly mildly. We were very, very lucky, and by the Friday, all of her blisters had burst and then healed. Um, she is now fully healed apart from a couple of little, what looks like scars where those marks were. Her symptoms were incredibly mild and um, her little cousin who is half her age has it and he was a lot worse. Um, I, feel, I feel bad for him. But yeah, she just had a few blisters coming out here and then um, one on her leg. And then they popped after one day and then were gone. Um, and she has been absolutely fine ever since. But I've still kept her in the house and garden for the whole rest of last week and this week and the weekend because I could not bear to pass that on. It is incredibly contagious and it's incredibly hideous. And whilst we were lucky for it to be very short-lived, um, I do realise that other people, I may not be so lucky and I didn't really want to give that on to anyone. Uh, so yeah, that's been my week. I'm ever so sorry that this is incredibly long. I think it was all moustache enhancement. I just had so much to gush about. And then a few rants in there. Don't really know what happened. I'm boiling. I don't think you can see on the camera, and thank goodness that you can't. But I think I actually just had sweat dripped out my head. That fan is not on, because it makes quite a lot of noise. I'm going to go and... Well, actually, I'm going to go downstairs and shave my husband's head. And then I'm going to come and sit in front of that. It's all fun in my house tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 20 past 10, so it's actually very late to be shaving my husband's head. I told him it was going to be a short one. I was like, I'm going to try and do that half hour thing that I keep saying I'm going to do. And here I am, in nearly an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys, if you've just sat through my giant marathon ramble. Anyway, uh, it's been so nice talking to you. It's been so nice offloading all the gubbins after a week of being basically, other than being at work, I have been trapped at my house in, with a toddler who I'm trying desperately to entertain. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been nice coming and chatting with you. <laughs> um, I'll be back next week and go over to Ravelry, to the podcast group, to check out the giveaway for this yarn for us getting to 500 subscribers. I am so, so, so grateful. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And I will speak to you next week. Thank you, as always, for making me so much less of a lonely knitter. <laughs>